Playoffs are a week away. One week? What week is it? It week is 14. currently week 14. Week Playoffs 14. Starting week 15 for most folks. Imagine being in like a 32-team a league or like a 24-team league and your playoffs are starting like week 11. It'd be sick. That would be kind of cool. I've always wanted to join a 32-team league. Just Never have, even once wanted to do it. Really? <laughs> Full team with IDP and everything. You just got you got to make no, offense no, 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 and no. defense. The Hell teams no. that are trotted out there must be insane. Yeah, like, you would like bang. You wish Boston Scott was yeah, your place. Yeah, you would hope for Devin Duvernay yeah. in the in the third round. Fucking four Kinda targets sounds a game. Fun. It does, fun. now that I'm thinking about it. But yeah. real quick, what's the biggest league you've been in? I've been in 16, man, and that's I've done a tough. 20. Yeah. I did a 20. Did a 20. It wasn't even for me. When I first, it's so weird, when I first started doing like fantasy stuff for money, a guy reached out to me on like Upwork, which was a site I was promoting for, not even fantasy stuff, I don't even know how he found me, but he paid me to run his team in a 20 team league and like the rest of my personal team said shit but i won that league for him and i was like this is insane i would check it like once a week somehow it came away uh, a winner for it but that guy paid me to run it that seems like a job sexy p would have he would love <laughs> yeah. it. like if we went under sexy p would just continue on being I'm like a fantasy football manager for hire yeah <laughs> honestly we could probably make so much money doing that shit animal you guys could yeah, I'm probably not me. Yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> Never mind. Not <laughs> no, <we could. laughs> All right, but it is important to uh, to help y'all as we progress towards the playoffs. Uh, th- playoffs? Don't talk about it. playoffs. You kidding me? We're gonna be looking at some of the best and worst schedules for teams as it relates to different positional groups. So we've got a couple QBs. Do we have a couple QBs? I do. Yes. Okay. We have a couple QBs. We have a lot of running backs. We have some wide receiver action, tight ends, and even some defenses to pick up now so that you could stream for a two to three week span. Because I'll tell you what, they say defense wins championships in real life. Defense, if you if you catch yourself a nice like 20, 26 point fantasy defense in the playoffs, probably catching a dub. It's there. pretty big. Yeah. It's huge. So we're going to go position by position. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't even realize right now as I've been talking, my screen is just on like the cutlass checkout for a bacon, egg, and cheese. <laughs> I want it so bad. You Prob- can't exit it. The problem is you can't order a bacon, egg, and cheese like too far in advance because you can't have you can't have the egg just like sitting yeah, there. Yeah, no, you know no. What I mean? All right, before we get into all the playoff schedules, the good, the bad, and the ugly, we have something beautiful for you. And Prize Picks is making your holiday season a little bit easier for you with this Justin Herbert free square. Point five passing yards this is what we call a can't lose in the business if you've never played on prize picks make sure you go download the app it is the first link in the description and if you use code bdge they're going to double whatever you throw down if you put 20 down they're going to give you 40 to play with in your account here is your first square absolutely laid up for you beautiful don't think too hard about it Go to Prize Picks, download the app, use the website, whatever, but use promo code BDGE when you do it. This will expire. This free square will expire on Sunday at kickoff. Let's start with the quarterback position because y'all seem to have that wrapped up. Uh, I'm going to bring up a guy that I know you also like. You want to talk about him together? I think we're on the same page here. Mike, Mike White, White, baby. Yes. New Look, quarterback for the Jets. He's the guy there now. Yeah, absolutely. He's been uh, he's been pretty fire for the Jets lately. He made Garrett Wilson relevant again. He's getting Elijah Moore involved. The run game looks pretty good. He's got a whole bunch of attempts. It kind of reminds me of when Joe Flacco started the season, how they were just tossing the rock nonstop. That's now the uh, new Mike White. And his schedule coming up for the rest of the year. After this week against Buffalo, we got Detroit. Jacksonville, Seattle. That seems like shootout, 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 all easy defenses. Sign me up for all the Mike White. Hell yeah. It's a moisty schedule right there. Yeah, I, I just like uh, the fact that you said before, like, they they really haven't been afraid to let him just sling it. Like, he threw 57 times against Minnesota last week. Obviously, he didn't throw any touchdowns, which means he's due, and that's even better for when, when we're talking about the playoffs here. Um, yeah, I just think, like, with the him and, and Garrett Wilson, that's just a great combo there. That's a great stack. So, uh, I'm all in on Mike White for the playoffs. Not even, like, nervous about starting him. You know, like, you might get nervous starting a Jets quarterback, typically. I'm not nervous with Mike White. No. Great streaming option. Super flex. Kind of a must start I think unless you know maybe you're loaded up on quarterbacks but in most cases I think he's going to finish close to a quarterback one top 12 if he's not would you rather have rest of season him or Trevor Lawrence Oh, easily Mike, Mike White. White. Yeah, Trevor Lawrence has a tough schedule. If we uh, if we were going to talk about guys that we don't like, Trevor Lawrence, one of them. Easy. Yeah, I'm out on him. Yeah, after like the, you know, the the injury scare, I don't know how hurt he is. If you really, you know, I just it's don't want to. It's fine. Yeah, see, I don't know that though. I don't know that, and I just I do. don't. I don't, the Jaguars have been a very, very bad team all year. They only have three wins against, like, three teams that had bad court. Like, it was just – they're bad. 
They're bad. I don't want any part of any of them. I keep losing money in fantasy matchups on the Jag, and then next week being like, this is the week they have to prove that they're not bad. And then now here we are, and I'm like, oh, they're They were, like, bad. pretty good for the last three weeks until this They show glimpses, week. but it's just not enough. That's they're not what not, you want in the playoffs. They're you not don't quite want there yet. All right. Um, I love Geno Smith at the quarterback position. The first one against, you know, week 15 against San Francisco. Tough matchup, obviously. It's the only game I would be hesitant, but... This is also, he's only had two games this season where he hasn't thrown touchdown. Zero touchdowns against the 49ers is one of those games. So I'm thinking he's he's going into this knowing, like, I got to throw a touchdown against the Niners. He's thrown two or more touchdowns in every single game. The guy's been unstoppable. Um, and after that, he's got Kansas City, who has not been very good against the pass, uh, against quarterbacks, against wide receivers. What the hell is this, a fly? I don't understand how we have flies and mosquitoes in our office. What we is can't this? even open a fucking window. Where the fuck did it come from? And then uh, the Someone's New York Jets, a... kind of a tough matchup, but it's just one That's... of those ones where... Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I love this schedule. So here's the thing with Geno, though. He has these games like where you look at the match, you go, oh, tough matchup, and he still throws two touchdowns every week. It doesn't matter. Plus, now Kenneth Walker going down. I don't know how much he actually is hurt, but I think they're going to lean on the pass game a little bit more. And when you got Lockett and Metcalf, you shouldn't really be worried. I think Gino will play well against the Niners. On the, it's a prime time game, and I feel like Gino's he gets That's a in his big bag. game for the division too. He gets in his bag when it's prime time. Yeah. You know, they wrote him off and all that kind of shit. So yeah, he gets yeah, yeah. he gets he gets excited about it. You know, so I, th- I feel like he can perform. Chiefs, they're getting a lot of points. Jets, uh, I'm I'm a little. It's a little hesitant because it's the championship week too, but it's one of those ones where like if Kenneth Walker's not playing and they're going to need to like, rely on the pass game a lot. Look, he's got Lockett. He's got. DK Metcalf, he's got good options. I'm excited for that sauce DK matchup, though. I, I think Geno's proved enough where you feel comfortable starting him mm-hmm. pretty much every week. He All literally right. has three touchdowns, two, 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 two. It's crazy. Just touchdowns every single game. He's a ball player. Yes. Another guy who seems kind of matchup proof nowadays, Jared Goff. I love Jared Goff. I love relax over there. I, I love the Lions offense. I've got dude. Jared Goff. They're okay. So their upcoming schedule isn't like anything mouth watering. They got the Jets. The Panthers, the Bears. Panthers and Bears might actually be, Those like, a really good opportunity. Obviously, they don't, whatever. Fantasy points-wise, they haven't been letting up a lot, but I, I just feel like the Lions get in these matchups where they put up a bon- bunch of points, their defense can't stop anything, and they just get into these natural shootouts. Jared Goff has an amazing connection with Amon Ross St. Brown, and uh, ever and as long as St. Brown is in the lineup for the Lions, Lions have, like, a top three offense in terms of points scored. It's, I mean, if for fantasy, like, Jared Goss, Goff, you, you might not like him in real life, but for fantasy, he... He performs pretty well, especially against uh, Chicago, who has been absolutely terrible. Let me see. They've a lot. They've a lot uh, allowed a lot on the ground. They're like they're just donating points. They're to fancy sixteen right uh, yeah. pa- fancy points allowed versus the quarterback. But in terms of like actually being a good pass defense, they're not. Not at all. Do you have another quarterback you want to talk about? Uh, no, that's it. All right, I, I do want to bring up one guy real quick. He's got a juicy schedule. He finishes the year with the Rams, the Dolphins. And the Vikings. And then the Lions, if you have a Week 18 playoff. Not many people do, but if you do, that's even a bonus. Aaron Rodgers. Hasn't been great this year. Obviously not the Aaron Rodgers that we have known him to be. But that's an amazing schedule. And guys like Christian Watson are starting to have a little bit of a breakout. Alan Lazard is, I guess, still there. I don't know how we feel about Aaron Rodgers. I have him on he's my, starting to cook up a little bit. I have him on my mid-tier right now. Like, mid-tier? Yeah. Like, he's not, like, a great option, but he's a good option. All right. So, the top three quarterbacks in terms of scoring uh, passing touchdowns. Mahomes, 30. Josh Allen, 25. Joe Burrow, 25. Right after that, there's two quarterbacks tied at 22. I mean, you can probably tell us the first one because we're talking about him now. But him and Geno Smith are both tied for top four passing touchdowns this year, which is kind of surprising. Aaron Rodgers has played one more game. He has his bye week coming up right now. Two is right behind him, and he's played three less games, three fewer games than Aaron Rodgers. So I'm just making discovery in real time right now, watching me <laughs> be confused as shit on the big screen. It's it's kind of like I would have never guessed Rodgers was in the top five, top six for passing touchdowns, but then you just throw in a lot of caveats of like, well, guys behind him have missed time, plus he hasn't had a bye week, so... I think it. I think that kind of makes sense. I think going forward, though, I, I feel good about starting Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, with that matchup, with that schedule, I like it too. I'm gonna move on to the running backs, and I'm gonna hey, listen. We've we've given out a lot of good players. I want to start down the bad vibe section. All right. All right. So I've I have three teams listed here that have tough run schedules, but Chicago is the first one, right? And I'm I'm worried about Dave Montgomery. I'm worried about Khalil Herbert. If he, if he comes back, so that's gonna be a committee fields is taking so much of the groundwork week 15 they play philadelphia with jordan davis on the field versus without the splits are crazy you don't really want to play a running back against them then they play buffalo which is a top a top 10 uh run defense and then they play detroit who have a lot uh, allowed a lot of fantasy points in the beginning of the season but the last like month month and a half of the season they've been like lights out against running backs there have not been running backs that have had success against them 
and I feel like they're starting to get it together as a team. They got a lot of mojo going, and it's just not really uh, a team that you want running backs to be playing against. So Chicago, Philly, Buffalo, and Detroit is a tough schedule to round out the year. Yes. Yeah, I would I would agree with everything. I mean, I'm not I wasn't like that excited to start David Montgomery to begin with. Well, the only thing here is like David. This I feel like this happens every year at the end of the year, David Montgomery, and then he goes nuts. Every single year, the last four or six weeks of the season, he's a league winning player. So this year, probably going to This is the year he does it again, baby. This is the year we do it again. This year he scores three times against Detroit. All right, Cincinnati. I'm very worried about Joe Mixon. Yep. They play at Tampa Bay, 29th in fantasy points allowed to the running back. Next week, they play at New England, 31st. So second toughest fantasy schedule. And then the last week of championship week, 17, Buffalo, 23rd. So. I'm looking at Joe Mixon. I'm like, I already, I mean, he, he's, I feel like he's lost money just the way Samaje P. Ryan is I playing. Say, I like Samaje better. Same. Just I don't know. He catches the ball better. I think when Mixon gets back on the field, I've, I've just never felt more confident that Mixon's going to average like 3.2 yards per carry over a three week stretch. You know, probably like 79 carries in three weeks, but 3.2 yards per carry. I'm worried about him end of season it's funny that like you don't worry about p ryan Go. but i think it's just because the expectations for him were lower you didn't invest like sure. in your draft capital there's but then, a little recency bias too involved 100 so how well he's been playing but then like yeah mixing just all types of bad vibes coming up that's always happened with him like even when geo was there it's like mixing can't get a pass catching role but when geo's a starting running back he gets nine targets same thing yeah. with p ryan it's just a weird system they got going on over there so he gives me bad vibes and the last one this is gonna be super controversial but cleveland Yes, and that's, yeah. that was my guy. Nick Chubb, yeah. They play Baltimore, who have really got their shit together on defense. Then they play the Saints, who are top 10 uh, fantasy points allowed to the running back. And then the last week is at Washington, 27. So bottom cool. five team you want to play against. So, like, you can't really sit Nick Chubb. But, I mean, you're definitely sitting Kareem Hunt. But that entire offense, like, Deshaun Watson's coming back, and he has a, a brutal schedule. Like, I don't know if we see, a, like, good games out of him before the end of the year. It could be tough, yeah. I think we'll get one. I, I think we were expecting a lot of rust from Deshaun Watson not playing in, like, a year and a half, two years or whatever. But it looked really bad. Like it was that, so bad. That was farther back behind than I thought he would be stepping back onto the field. And I just don't trust anybody in Cleveland going and forward. They play year. at, I think, at Cincinnati this week. And I think it's going to be a bloodbath. Like, I think Cincinnati's defense is super legit. They this, just, yeah, they just held down Mahomes. Cincinnati's never beaten them, though, with Burrow, right? That is true. Like, like Cleveland, this weird thing Cleveland where does have some ownage on Cincy. But, like, just looking at it from a matchup point, like, they look so shot. Yeah. What is the spread on that game? Six. Six. I took the under of 47. I feel like. You know, Cleveland just having that ownage plus like that. plus Bengals or uh, five and a half Watson right being now. Garbage Bengals right at now. home. I think I'm going to take the Bengals there. Yeah, that's that's scary for me. Uh, we can move it on to some uh, some good ones. I've got a, I've got a good one. I kind of like run it. It's uh, a Mr. Rookie Isaiah Pacheco, dude. I feel first, like first one up. A lot yep. of people are going to have him on their list. I mean, the schedule speaks for itself. You got Houston, who allows the most fantasy points to running backs. Seattle, who allows the fourth most fantasy points, and then Denver, who allows the 24th most points. But they give up a lot more yards than you would think to running backs. Like just you know. The other week they had Deonta Foreman 113 yards. Jacobs went for 109. ETM went for 156. They don't give up touchdowns to running backs, but they give up yards. So all three of these games are pretty juicy. Um, the Houston week, game is great. The Houston one I'm looking at, uh, Texans defense has allowed 14 rushing touchdowns to running backs this season. I mean, they just surrender touchdowns. And to a team, uh, this is like a game where I feel like the Chiefs would lean on Pacheco. That's why I feel like, there. yeah, the, the games where you know the game script's going to be for, like, the runner, that's where Pacheco goes off. I yes. can see McKinnon being a player in the Seattle game if that ends up being, like, a light-out fucking fireworks everywhere. I can see it. Yeah. So I, I have Pacheco on there, too. I have uh, Jonathan Taylor might make the end of your season worth that top three pick you used on him. Because they play... Minnesota, the Chargers, and the Giants. And it's not all, you know, easy games, but uh, Minnesota is a pass funnel defense. You can throw the ball all over them, or uh, you could run the ball on them, but they're tough to pass on right now. Or, wait, are they? No, they're, I, I think they're, they're garbage easy both to pass ways. On. They're yeah. just a bad defense. They're a bad they're, defense. They have the worst point differential. They're just a very bad yeah. defense. Okay, the Vikings are a bad defense. We could do whatever we want with them. Even <laughs> yeah. Matt Ryan's going to have a fucking good time with them. But the Chargers are a notoriously terrible run defense. And then the Giants are whatever they are at this point. They're 14th in terms of fantasy points allowed to the running back position. Down the stretch, you're going to see it's Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Like, Giants give up the fifth most rushing yards to running backs this right year. i could see a big a couple big plays for taylor down the stretch and there's no way they're letting matt ryan throw the ball more than like 25 times a game for the for the rest of the season hey, as a jonathan taylor owner in many leagues and he's been disappointing me all year i hope you're right so you just got to sneak into the playoffs and then i think he gives you back what you put into him sneak in so bad two guys i want to bring up kind of already brought up their offenses before but just tagging along zonovan knight who you may have been able to pick up on waivers a few weeks back as long as he's still 
getting the work that he's getting and, and like the main guy. I have no idea what's going on with Michael Carter. He'll be back this week, but I think it's I think I still it's, think it's Knight gonna be getting like at least the goal line work and everything. It's Zonovan's too. job to lose yeah. at this point, I think. You think so? Yeah. yeah, I don't see okay. Michael Carter taking over his his role. Yeah, I mean uh fifteen rushing attempts in his two games, eight combined targets through those two weeks. So he's getting good work, easy schedule. Yeah, like the two good games he just had were better than like any running back outside of Brees Hall has had in that Jets offense this year. Yeah. And literally then, him. How do we feel about DeAndre Swift? He's been disappointing this year, but like we said with the Lions, their offense is firing on all cylinders. They got kind of a pretty easy matchup between matchups. the with the Panthers and the Bears. And uh these last two weeks haven't been or I guess it's really just this last week. Nineteen I think he's back. fantasy I points. Think he's back. You think I, he's all the way I, back? I think we needed one game for them to show us that like they're they're good to have him back in in uh, a twelve to fifteen touch roll. I, th- I think the problem with DeAndre Swift is the same problem. He had since week one, if he was healthy or not, is he's not going to get the goal line carries. He may get one or two. He's sneaking one here, there. But it's Jamal Williams getting all the goal line work, and that's, like, obvious. Yeah, so, but, I mean, like, if he's getting, like, seven targets, and if he's getting between, like, 10 and 15 carries, like, that could still be really valuable. He can hit those explosive plays against these bad defenses. Just, Jamal Williams gets the goal line work, but a lot of the times, if they're not, like, directly on the goal line, they'll give him, like, the eight-yard line carries, the six-yard line I, I carries. I think it's dependent upon, too, like, if whether or not the Lions are up or not. Like, if they're up and they can, like, but DeAndre, they can they can run the ball, but I feel like they're going to throw it enough where like yeah, that helps Swift, but it's still a Munra. I yeah. guess the guy. I, I Carolina about Swift, Chicago. I just Carolina felt Chicago. They're, they're sixteen seventeen. I feel like Swift is going to be nice. I just hasn't. Yeah, I haven't felt comfortable starting him all year. All right, last one. How do you feel about Derrick Henry? I love. Him. I like it. Okay, like his schedule a lot. I mean, not nothing, like. nothing to nothing more <laughs> neat. Now, I mean, he's been really bad the last couple of weeks. They're yeah. giving him a ton of carries. He hasn't broken free probably a product of the offense but he gets the chargers week 15 houston week 16 like yeah, they're all juicy. you're 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 in your you're on your way to the championship if you have derrick henry pretty much in those slots play dallas week 17 that's gonna be a much tougher test but just enjoy 15 and 16 while you got it yeah obviously with no uh Traylon burks concussion protocol we don't know when he's gonna be back but that, for this week yeah probably i have a uh, one more i really want to quickly touch on brian robinson running back position uh week 15 he's got the giants who go up the fifth most rushing yards this season he just had a very nice game against them. If he had scored, it would have been even nicer. But he went 21 for 96. I'm just looking at his his carries over the past, like, four weeks. He had 21 attempts, 18, 15, 26. This man gets the rock, all right? And in the playoffs, I want the guy who's getting the ball. Yeah, he's got a tough matchup in um, San Francisco, San week, Francisco 16. week 16. And then week 17, right back to the Browns, who give up the second most fantasy points to the running backs. And they also have the third most rushing touchdowns to running backs. So, like, Brian Robinson, week 15 and 17, I think he's a must-start. He could actually he could actually win you your league. I think he gets a touchdown against the Giants this I'm week. I'm going to be starting him over one. Matt Ryan in Superflex. You should. Remember that question I asked you? Yeah. And they were separated by .04. Yeah, I don't so remember who was, <laughs> was worse and who was better. It's sad, though. That's all I got for, for RBs. Yeah, that's it. That was my last one. Yeah, I'm good. All right, um, well, who you got for the fucking wide receivers, though? This, <laughs> I'm going to go right back to it, but <laughs> Amon Ross St. Brown and Garrett Wilson, dude. These Jets and these Lions, easy schedule, and they're like the alphas of their offense. We were talking a little bit about this offline right before we hopped on. Amon Ross St. Brown, how high would you put him? Feels like he belongs in that tier with, like, Stephon Diggs. Uh, maybe not like the Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chases, but kind of like that next tier right below it. Just He's, he's trying to – he's scratching on the door. It's, right. It's kind of, like, crazy how chalk this year went for fantasy. I don't, uh, probably outside of Amon Ra, but top eight dudes right now. Devontae Adams, Stephon Diggs, Tyree Kill, Justin Jefferson, A.J. Brown, CeeDee Lamb, Amon Ra, Cooper Cup. Mm-hmm. Like, crazy. That That's, like – Borderline going to be the order. I think you could make the argument that Amon Ra goes above CeeDee Lamb and A.J. Brown next year, but obviously a lot of moving parts in the offseason, see what happens yeah. in Detroit and those other spots. Yeah, I mean, Amon Ra, if you have him, he's been a must-start. You're playing him. Uh, Garrett Wilson? I think he's a must-start at this point. Yeah, yeah. Sure. you have to. Yeah. We talked about Mike White earlier. Mike White's been slinging it, and he's been throwing it to Garrett Wilson. Like, the last two games with Mike White and Garrett Wilson, and five for 95 with two touchdowns, and then eight for 162 last week. Like, he's just feeding him the rock, and... He's clearly the best pass catcher on that team. So, I mean, I, I, I love I love Garrett Wilson. I love Mike White. We had that stack in the bash, and I thought that was going to really actually uh, help us, and it didn't. Same. That was like our like low-key, our worst player in our starting line. Yeah, I was like, oh, yeah. Fucking advance. Yeah, dude, he is uh, – he like barely played the first – 
two months of the season. He's the wide receiver 18 right now. Yeah. He's probably going to finish his top 15. The top matchups are juicy. Other than week 17 is a little sneaky. Seattle has one of the better pass defenses in the league. I know that all their games do seem to be like shootouts, but the wide receivers for some reason definitely struggle in those games. Tariq Woolen or whoever else is there, they're studs. Yeah, well, that was where I was going to go with Kansas City. So I was looking at Kansas City's uh, schedule the last three weeks of the season, 15, 16, 17. Now, we discussed this a little bit. They're at Houston week 15, which, again, on paper, great for any offense, but it goes to the fact of what we were saying with, like, Pacheco. Pacheco probably gets 20, 22 carries that game. McKinnon yeah. probably gets, like, a handful. It's like, how many pass attempts does Patrick Mahomes have to have against Houston? Their next game, they play against Seattle, who have been really 26th most fantasy points allowed to the wide receivers, and then Denver, week 17, dead last. Like, they mm-hmm. allow nothing to fantasy wide receivers. So, Kansas City was already a really tough wide receiver group to put, uh, like, to be starting in your lineup regardless yeah, of who it was. Playing musical chairs with who's going to be the guy that week. Yeah, and a lot of times there wasn't even, like, a guy. It was just, like, Travis Kelsey, Noah Gray, Jarek McKinnon. So, the last three weeks of the season, I don't know if any of the wide receivers in Kansas City are startable. Like, maybe I'll put Juju in against the Houston uh, for the Houston game and, like, kind of see how that goes and read it from there. But I'm not excited about anybody. I'll put Juju against the Broncos maybe just because he's going to – if he's in the slot – that's, but he's been like bad too, you know. Yeah, it's just tough. I don't know. The Broncos are they're, uh, maybe by then they'll be so broken it won't matter. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be big. Uh, I mean, obviously Kelsey, Pacheco, McKinnon, and Clyde might be back actually by the time they play Houston too. So might get a little bit messy there. But the wide receivers are something I'm staying away from. What about Christian Kirk? He has uh, 15. He has Dallas Jets Houston coming up as his playoff schedule. Oh, I feel like he's one of the more overrated guys based on like maybe really? a four. Are you talking about this for a no good or a good? Because I don't a like no him good. At all. I don't yeah. like him at all. I don't. I don't trust the Jags offense. We talked a little bit with Trevor Lawrence, and but trade I, deadline was still open. I'd fucking come get him from you guys. I think he was, really, he's been playing mediocre. Like he, last week, he had a good you know, week. What he went six for like a hundred something, but he, he finished no as touchdown. the wide receiver nineteen. Yeah, no touchdowns still. Like that's the problem with the the Jaguars team. Is like I feel like you guys are getting picky here. He's he's been really? good. Yeah, I feel like he's, he's been, been good. Better, better than you guys think. Maybe maybe he had like a lull in the be- in the middle of the year where he wasn't like great. But his matchups are shit. I, yeah. I kind of feel like that lull is what Christian Kirk is, and then his bus games were kind of. I don't know. I just don't. I don't think that's the norm. I'm not hating on Jags Kirk. Offense. I just don't like the matchups for him at all in the playoffs. And he hasn't been anything like special. He's been good. He's been solid. He's been pretty consistent. But uh, I don't think he's like a league winner. Like that's he's true. not going to go out he there. He kind of feels like one of those guys though that just like I don't think the matchup matters for him. I think it matters for the like if the if other pieces there. If the Jaguars not like the offense in, as a whole. Like if the Jaguars play against Dallas, you're like fuck. The Jaguars mm-hmm. offense is going to be in trouble, which means he's in trouble. But I'm not necessarily looking at it like oh their cornerbacks are good. Kirk's in trouble because he's like a slot guy that move them all over the place. So it's like it, he he ebbs and flows with the Jaguars offense. Yeah. Okay. You know that I mean? that's fair. I I think it it definitely is more of a a slandering on the Jacksonville offense more than Christian Kirk. But he's a guy that if I've been relying on to get me to the to the playoffs. I am not excited to play him. Like, Jets, tough pasty, but I'm not worried about, like, Sauce Gardner playing on Christian Kirk. Like, I'd be fine playing him in that matchup. Dallas like is a whole other. I would just be though. worried that the Jags only throw up, like, 14 points. I feel like I'm Christian sure. Kirk's only gone over, like, 20 points, like, twice this season. Christian Kirk? I yeah. mean, he's had a he never really has those 20-point games. He's, like, he, his best games are, like, 15 points, uh, which is, like... It's not really true. He had 20 against... He had 27 against KC. I mean, but, but yeah, but just going off of... Pure twenty point games, I feel like yeah. it's not a good like six that's, for one seventeen. That's my metric, dog. So, this is a the, random measure. We're in the playoffs. I want twenty point games. He's. It looks like he's had as many like fourteen point games as he had like sub eight. Yeah, he's been pretty consistent. That's what I'm saying. Six I'm for one seventeen. Like, six for seventy eight. Two. Six for seventy two and a one. Four for twenty four and one. Seven for nine. I, I feel like I think if you gave it another look at the numbers, you would be surprised. He's like the wide receiver eleven overall in fantasy right now. I, I'm more just fading Jags. That's fair. You know who is scoring 20 points a game, though? Samaja Piran, the GOAT. Wide receiver-wise, not Piran. Obviously, Piran's the GOAT. He always gets 20. But wide receiver, who's getting 20 points per game, Christian Watson. Last four games, 23 points, 19, 19, 31. The dude can't help himself. He has to find the end zone. He needs it like a diabetic needs insulin. Yeah, he's allergic to the 100-yard part of the field. Yeah, nice deep threat. Gets those end of rounds. Uh, We mentioned the schedule for the Packers looking Ultra Charmin soft. Rams, Dolphins, Vikes. Love it. It's pretty sexy. At this point, it's just like, I don't know. People, oh, he's not getting enough touches or whatever. It's like, dude, fuck that. Like, he's Yeah, just, he, if he's still like, 
those if he's getting three touches, but one of those touches has the potential to go for seventy yards and yeah. touchdown. I don't That's care. the thing. He's like the only part of this offense that actually has the explosiveness to it, and there's no way they take him off the field because of that. Yeah, no, I, I love him for the playoffs. I have no problem starting him. Um, see, this one's gross. This one's gross actually, but it's 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 Darius Slayton. He's the only option in New York that actually catches the ball. And this is a team that's, you know, they're, they're in the playoff hunt still. They're going to be playing. They're going to be playing their asses off to make sure that they, they don't slip out of this because this is, you know, the, the Giants, this is big for them. I like that. He's, um, he's just been awesome. Yeah, the he's been he's been very solid. He hasn't scored any touchdowns, which is kind of like the uh, the only thing I have against him is he, he gets those like 30-yard, 40-yard catches. He'll get a couple of them a game. But the touchdowns don't really come. Uh, Washington, Minnesota, Indianapolis. The schedule is like meh. You know, it's not the best. The best matchups. Minnesota's a good one. Washington's not the best. Indianapolis is pretty good. But also, we mentioned earlier uh, off camera that it, on paper it looks like they they were good against the pass, but they really are just they're so bad against the run. Right? What were we talking about with them? Where it looks like Indianapolis. I almost feel like, like Indy just can't score points, so they just get into these like low scoring games. Well, that's yeah. what I'm here. They're kind see. of brutal. I go to Andrew Jones has eleven passing touchdowns on the year. Receiver tied for 23rd in the NFL. It's fewer than Jacoby, Matt Ryan, Actually Mariota. Disgusting. He's like a top 10 QB in fantasy, I think, though. Because he has 520 yeah, rushing, rushing yards. Yeah. Are, are insane. Um, yeah, no, I just think that he's literally the only option there. So I feel like if you have him, you shouldn't you shouldn't feel bad about starting him. I like Darius Slayton, actually. I like him, too. I think that's a, I think that's a good call. Hope, the problem is they don't, they'll never run like a fucking end zone play to. So uh, he's going to have a 50 yard touchdown or he's not. What? Like. I remember why you brought up Slayton before we were recording. This dude's like, who do I play my flex, Higby or Slayton? <laughs> and me and Sexy are just looking at him like, what fucking question is that? <laughs> Higby could be having a bounce back game tonight. It's just not a thing anymore. Never happening it's for not Higby. in his repertoire if he, if anymore. he goes off tonight, you guys owe me money. All right, last guy or last guy that I want to bring up at least, Brandon Ayuk, or possibly Debo Samuel, just 49ers in general. It's kind of difficult to decipher who's going to have like the big game outside of McCaffrey, but... To finish the season, Seattle, Washington, Vegas. I think Seattle could be a really uh, high-scoring game. Vegas, obviously not a good defense. It really just comes down to how much we believe in Brock Purdy. I think, think I like Debo can, more. You, you like think, Debo more? I think they like go back to that line of scrimmage type offense. Yes, yeah. especially with Purdy. So get the, the ball offense, out quick, let safe. the playmakers do yeah, their We don't thing. want Purdy thrown downfield. We're going to throw it behind the line of scrimmage. We're going to do five-yard five, five dump-offs. Yeah, like Debo just had a... a a big game, or at least a big target game. I feel like it might go back to that. I'm, I'm sure they'll split the games of, like, who who does well and whatever, but I think I like Debo a little bit more the rest yeah. of the season. Debo and Ayuk have been pretty close in terms of fantasy production. Debo's been really underwhelming this year, I feel like. Yeah, they kind of, that, that gap between them definitely got closed, so. Closed real fucking quick. Yeah. Um, Brock Purdy, kind of a guy I like. I mean, we just mentioned his schedule. Not bad. I have a a no good. (laughs) Not bad. No good for wide receivers. I'm going to go with the Cardinals, all of them. Every Cardinals wide receiver, their schedule, if you look at it, New England, Denver, Tampa Bay. New England's been top 10 versus wide receivers. Justin Jefferson is the only wide receiver who scored more than 20 points versus the Patriots this season. Stephon Diggs with 18.7 is the next most. So Patriots uh, just been shutting down wide receivers. It's just been a good defense yeah. all around. I'm I'm really curious to see how that uh, how that dynamic Kyler D Hop Hollywood that plays team's out about the to rest fall of the season. Apart. I think they're going to fire Cliff and everything. It's just the whole. I think the passing game looked good right before their bye. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, New England, Denver, Tampa Bay, thirteenth. Yeah, these are all just very about to good. look not good. Yeah, yeah. I get it. We'll see. About I mean, to, about to crumble. D Hop does look. Like normal D Hop though. Yeah, D Hop. Obviously, you're going to start D Hop, but I'm just saying, like, if if he all of a sudden goes out there and gives you seven points, don't be surprised because I fucking warned you. <laughs> you warned us. <laughs> if you can manage to make it through those three weeks, though, championship week, week 17, Atlanta, juicy match. Terrible. Match. Who's that? That's D Hop. Oh yes. Yeah, D- oh, you know what? That's right because this is um, this week's the Patriots. Week, this week's the I'm Patriots. Looking at 2020 <laughs> schedule. <right? laughs> no, no, this they played Patriots 14, yeah, 14. Broncos 15. Before we get into the next position, today's video is brought to you as all of these Friday videos are because it's a good time, and so is this website, Pristine Auction. All right, we are giving away. A Nick Chubb signed Browns helmet. At first glance, a little funky, but I actually love this design. It would look very, very cool in a man cave, right? Absolutely free to enter this giveaway. All you got to do is go to Pristine Auction. That link will be down below in the description. Go to Pristine Auction, and when you sign up, when you register for an account, there will be a spot to put BDGE. Our code, all right? You don't have to put any money down right now. Use BDGE and you're automatically entered into the raffle for this Nick Chubb giveaway. We do one of these monthly giveaways every single month. And this is what we got going on for the holiday month for December. Nick Chubb, 
going to dominate down the stretch. This helmet going to dominate in your man or woman cave. Go over to Pristine Auction and check out some of the deals, the auctions they got on there. They've got helmets. They've got balls. They've got bats. They've got gloves. They've got anything that you are a fan of, any sport, any athlete, whatever. You can go find them. And if you used our pro... And if you used our code BDGE when you first signed up, not only are you getting involved in this raffle, but you will have $10 to put towards your first auction. PristineAuction.com, link down below. Thank thank you guys, Pristine Auction, and then thank y'all for entering the raffle. Nick Chubb, signed helmet, December giveaway. Get it done. Uh, I have one tight end. Well, actually, I have... uh, Your tight end? I have have a couple tight ends. Any (laughs) tight ends that play the Cardinals, so going back to the Cardinals, they give up the most fantasy points to tight ends. Greg Dulcich, week 15, who's probably the only guy on the Broncos that catches the ball anyway, so that's just a double double whammy there. you got a good tight end on a team that gives up points to tight ends. Week 16, Kate Otten. This is when Tom Brady's going to finally just click like they're going to click and go on their playoff push so kate on i like that uh michael prude i don't really care for that one week Stop. 17 yeah <laughs> i don't really care for that one week 17 michael prude but uh yeah any tight end that plays the cardinals has been very good and then hunter henry he's got some good matchups week 15 16 17 uh week 17 for your championship week i love him who he's going up against the Dolphins, who give up the third most fantasy points to tight ends and the fourth most receiving touchdowns to tight ends and then on the other side gasicki who is, listen, Patriots gave up the second most touchdowns to tight ends. In my Madden franchise, Gesicki, I signed him in free agency just to trade him for, like, a first round. <laughs> His rating was up to, like, 92 yeah, too for good. some reason. Because he's since, probably got, like, a superstar trait that he yeah, does deserve. Yeah, it's fucking so stupid. Honestly, with, with fantasy tight ends, I, I just, like, don't really trust, like, the whole they've allowed this many points to tight ends. I, it's just not a trustable stat I feel like it's me. the only one I actually do trust because, really? like, tight ends is such, like, a, you know, these guys, they all do the same thing. They either block or they run up the seam. So it's like, you know, if this guy's going to run up the seam against that team, then he the Cardinals the are like really bad compared to everybody yeah, else. It's like, like every metric, close. yeah. That's why it's it's, it's bad. I get like that, every but every tight end is having but success like, against a guy one. who's like a borderline, like Hunter Henry. Like the matchup is not going to be the thing that pushes me over. I'm not going to be like, oh, he's got a good matchup for tight ends. Let me start Hunter Henry. Whereas like a quarterback, I would. You yeah. know what I mean? Like if there's two guys that are similar tiers, I'm like, two is going against Houston. This guy's going against the Niners. Like I'm definitely switching that up. But for tight ends, I don't give a fuck. One tight end to keep your eye out for on the waiver wire championship week: Cole Komet. Plays against Detroit. Dude, I think he's just a great pickup. Like, yeah, right now, with fucking player, Mooney like, on the IR, I feel yeah. like he's going to be a baller. And the fact that the tight end position is a fucking wasteland. So. It is. He does have a tough schedule against Philly and Buffalo prior to that. I don't even care. But he did finish as the tight end one, scoring 21 fantasy points last time they played Detroit. So, he's definitely a guy who I might pick up a week early, stash him if I don't have a solidified tight end. Yeah, I like that. Uh, defenses? Defenses, yep. I went with the Commanders. I like that. Uh, Giants, Niners, Browns. The Niners is one of those ones where it's a little iffy just because their defense is so good, but I feel like Brock Purdy's going to have to have a stinker game. We'll, we'll know in about a week how good of a matchup and that, that the is. The pass rush with Chase Young, like that's going to be the game where I'm going to watch it because if they can get after the young back quarterback. this week or next week? This week, next week. It's, this week is what I heard. He's missed so much time. I don't I don't even know if I like factor him into them being a good I'm defense. just hoping that when he comes back, it's just like they've been playing good without him. So like when he comes back, they should just, that's going to only help. I really like the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know how uh, what their owner ownage percentage is. I don't know if they're like a I think, streamable I think defense. there are ones, a few of the leagues that I'm in that, that do defenses still that I'm in, I've, I've been looking at them. I, I try to find under-the-radar ones, but uh, to start the playoffs, they play Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's offense has been atrocious. I don't care that they have Tom Brady. They struggle to score like 18 points a week. Their total, their team total is always set at 17 and a half, and they've gone over it like once this year. Would kill for 18 points. Fuck Mike Evans. <laughs> Terrible, all right? And then they play New England. New England, kind of a soft offense. Championship week, they play Buffalo. Obviously, you don't want to play them there. Nope. But for the first two weeks of the playoffs, I really like the Bengals. They'll get you there, and then you're on your own. Then you got to pivot. Yeah. A team you could pivot to, New York Giants. New York Giants start the playoffs between the Commanders. Minnesota, not a great matchup. But then Indy. You got to love Matt Ryan when you're starting defense against them. You guys got to take uh, take it away, boys. All right. Who were you talking about? Uh, talking about the Giants. Giants, yes. Oh, yes, that's right. Finishing with the Colts. Yeah, going up again. I mean, honestly, at this point in the season, that might even be a Sam Ellinger game. We don't even know. It could be a Nick Foles game. Honestly, I'd be worried if it was a Nick Foles game then. Nick Foles might be the most dangerous quarterback the Colts have. Nick Foles should probably be the starter there. I would love Nick Foles. I think you would love Nick Foles at this point. For my team? For the Broncos. Broncos, hell yeah. I would take literally anybody you got, anybody you name. You can... Pick me, give me a guy from the supermarket. I don't even care. <laughs> Brock Purdy gets me excited, but I, I would feel so much better with Nick Foles under center. All right. Um, oh, I got... More defenses? No. I thought I had a no good. 
I mean, the defense to own is going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't think that they're highly available in most leagues, but they play against Houston. They play against Seattle. Seattle will be tough, but then they play Denver again in the championship week. That's going to be one where you're watching this week, see how they play against them. And then next week, and then week 17, double it. Just it, when the Chiefs defense throws up like 10 points this week, just know that week 17 comes around, second time around, when they get more scouting reports on Russell Wilson, they're going to single-handedly win you your fantasy league week 17. How many times does Russell Wilson turn over the ball against the Chiefs? Like being in a position where he's forced to make a play. Two. Knowing damn well he can't make a play. He only has two turnovers? Two. In the first half? All right, we're done with this. I can't can't do this. Can't today. take the slander. I'm sorry. Can't do this today. Just get. It's been it's been tough. All right. So those were some players that should help you in your playoffs. Uh, some great matchups for you. Some not so great matchups. Uh, hopefully you like this video. So if you did, please like. Please subscribe to the channel if you are new. You got any last words? No, I think I'm good. I got everything out there. Feel good, alleviated. It's a good therapy session. You even gonna make the playoffs in any leagues? Um, or was this it for you? You just like through this? Yeah, I was just looking at schedules. I was like, oh man, if my team had that good, guy, if I only if I had Amon Ross St. Brown, I'd be there. Yeah. Um, all right. Good luck to everybody. If you're in your fantasy playoffs, if they're starting this week, if they're starting next week, I don't know. Some people have a different. <laughs> Perfect way to end it. Thank you.